technology to prevent our own extinction by an asteroid. The power to wipe out our species with an engineered super disease. The battle against cyber terror and the double-edged sword that is genetic engineering. Now, more doomsday tech on Modern Marvels. It's the year 2016. Terrorists, thwarted by military means, refocus their resources into cyber attacks against the United States. They wreak havoc on major banks, Wall Street, and the Federal Reserve. The U.S. is kept in a state of economic stagnation. Emboldened, the terrorists achieve the unthinkable, hacking into the nation's nuclear command and control. They mimic a Russian attack. Dozens of U.S. and Russian missiles are launched before the false alarm is recognized. By then, it's too late. Most cyber terror experts agree that the idea of terrorists hacking their way to World War III is highly unlikely. But coordinated cyber attacks could inflict significant damage to our infrastructure and even cause loss of life. Every computer network is vulnerable. There's no such thing in the world as a 100% secure system. Period. We are totally dependent on computers today. If all the computers, in fact, if, if even just the intelligent computers, computers doing things that used to require human intelligence, stopped functioning, our society would grind to a halt. To wreak cyber havoc, it's mainly a matter of getting in. What we're about to do is, is we're going to show you how easy it is to break into a network. So for all argument's sake, let's pretend we're on Wall Street. We're outside in a car. So if we are detected by the firewalls and the IT managers realize, hey, something's going on, and we find out that they know, we can just drive off and they'll never know. What we're looking at here is a program that's available on the internet. It's free. What this program shows you is all the available networks in our local area. This one shows that there's strong signal strength. Let me show you what the signal strength looks like. This right here, all this in green shows that we have a good connection to this particular wireless network. We also see here that there's an IP address for this particular one. So now that we have this person's private IP address, we're going to try, well, we're not going to try, we're going to hack into this person's network. The final line of defense is the passcode. There's plenty of programs that can crack passcodes, especially to wireless networks. Today, we're gonna to use one that's gonna allow us to crack the passcode to this particular wireless network. Entering the information, and here we go. It just cracked this person's passcode or encryption code to get into their network. Once a network has been breached, it can be used to hack into other networks. We can go hack the Pentagon. We can go hack a, a financial institution. And if they trace it, they track it, they're not gonna track it back to us. They're gonna track it back to the network that we, we broke into and used to break into their network. The methods used to crack into secure networks don't vary a great deal on the hacker hierarchy. Only the resources and the level of malice. Lowest on this scale are what cyber experts call the ankle biters. Ankle biters are often the teenage kids we hear about, the hackers. Um, that are defacing websites or uh, breaking into computer systems sort of for thrill and games. Then you have computer hackers that you never hear about. These are the guys who are paid computer hackers. They make their living as computer hackers. They break into a bank, steal millions of dollars, and send it to the Cayman Islands and then wire it to five different banks. Sir, we have a missile event. The most malicious form of cyber attack is termed information warfare. What we're trying to do is defend our systems uh, from information warfare attack. We really want to dis distinguish between the kinds of attacks that the teenage kid hacker could do and the kinds of attacks that we term from a well-funded nation state. So some well-funded entity is going to launch some concerted attack against our information systems. In 2003, a skillful cyber attack infiltrated Fort Campbell headquarters for the Army's elite helicopter units. The attacker monitored the base's network activity for months, 
damage to national security has not been disclosed. We certainly have seen evidence uh, of large-scale attack uh, being launched against the United States. One of the most widely used tools to thwart a cyber attack is a firewall. A firewall is either a software program or, ideally, a piece of hardware that filters all outside visitors to a network. We discovered over time that no prevention technology is quite strong enough. You, you can't build a wall that's totally impenetrable. So then the technology really moved towards detecting intrusions. So we went from preventing to detecting. Detection of a cyber attack is about to enter a new age with the advent of quantum cryptography. Its sole defense against intrusion, a single photon of light. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells you that if you measure a very, very small thing, like a single photon of light, you change it, you destroy it when you do that. And that's the secret behind quantum cryptography. Cryptography, the practice of masking sensitive data with random numbers or letters, is the key to internet commerce and communication. A standard network uses large prime numbers that are difficult to factor, but not uncrackable. In the quantum cryptography experiment, Photons are pulsed through underground fiber optic cables, acting as sentries ahead of streams of information. Any intrusion will destroy the photon and alert the network to the hacker. If you have only a single particle of light and somebody is eavesdropping on it, by the very act of looking at it, they destroy it. And then there's one additional interesting fact, which is you cannot make an exact copy of the quantum state of a photon. So they can't grab it, copy it and send you a copy. The major hurdle has been sending the photons more than about 50 miles, since photonic energy dissipates over fiber optic cables. When that hurdle is cleared, hackers beware. With quantum cryptography, it would take the hackers a long time to even learn the ABCs of what we're doing. But once they've learned those ABCs, we believe this is actually protected by the laws of physics. There is no way around this. From computers, to biotechnology, to disease research. All double-edged 21st century technologies are subject to deliberate abuse and unintended consequences. And yet the benefits of advanced technologies may outpace the dangers they bring. We may one day have the means to defeat the doomsday rock with our name on it. Or, we may rapidly exit the world stage through our own devices. 99% of the species that have ever lived on Earth are now extinct. Only time will tell whether we join their ranks.